everybody to our daily gun show we come to you live every night at midnight eastern that's 9 p.m pacific for about an hour each night we do three gun related topics with different topics throughout the week we pick those topics on monday so if you'd like to help be part of the show join us on monday and let us know what topics we should use um we run it live on youtube and uh we've what are we at somewhere around even tell me Anyway, we're on YouTube on the Daily Gun Show channel. We're always looking for people to subscribe to that channel. We would like to get to that magical thousand number that unlocks all kinds of new adventures for us. Uh, we uh, simulcast it over at gunchannels.com, a community we built uh, four years ago. It's uh, focused on firearms, and it's completely driven by its members. So we watch the comments that are coming in live over there, as well as on YouTube. We'll take the audio from the shows and post it up on iTunes and SoundCloud, so we're uh, always thankful for the people that listen to the show now or in the future, especially those that leave us feedback, who comment on the videos and, like say, subscribe to our channels on various platforms. That lets us know you're out there. It also uh, helps our content, our shows, to be recommended to more listeners, and that's one of our goals, so we really do appreciate the people that take the time to do it, so much so that we talk about it at the beginning of every single show. Uh, we've got hosts. Three of us are here in tonight. We've got Bob jumping in from Canada. Thanks for joining. Me, hey, glad to be here. And we got Jimmy from Phoenix. Thanks for jumping hey. in. Hey, good to be here. Thanks. Well, it sounds like we won't have anybody else, but maybe we will. We'll uh, be watching out there for the uh, spreadsheet. See if anybody's going to jump in. And uh, if anybody's got things to contribute to the show, we do like to think of this as an exercise in the new media. So we're watching the comments over on Gun Channels and on YouTube, like we mentioned. And uh, we'll dig in. We're on episode number 465, and it's Friday. So we'll be talking about gun tech, uh, specifically rust removal. I guess we have already talked about this before. Uh, the gun biz and alternative gun topics. So something happened with the schedule here, and we're I think we're duplicating topics. So uh, aside from the stuff we normally hit, which are different, the gun shop and the gun movie and the things like that, um, we could probably play some of these topics by ear tonight but um before we dig into the show we usually take a break see if anything happened overnight worth talking about i got nothing i don't remember great so in the morning these guys are all groggy from just waking up couldn't remember nothing at night too sleepy can't remember nothing from what happened during the day but that's good because our showing about what happened in the news or nothing so uh over there watching the lobby and hanging out in Ghost Chat or Clover's chat earlier today. And then uh, Edge didn't do a show this night tonight. I was chatting with him a little bit on the text. Well, uh, do we want to go with rust removal again or do we want to do something else? Do you have any more guns with rust on them? Bob probably does. No, mine are pretty clean now. Yeah, I, I, we settled that one the last time. <laughs> yeah, I know. We kind of settled everything. So, yeah, I don't know. We should talk about something else. How about uh, high polish on stainless guns? Good thing, bad thing? Or high polish and then bluing? I mean, high polish. I don't own stainless guns, so I guess I'm out of it. But um, if I did, I think I would not care if they're scratched. So. I probably wouldn't bother with a high polish. It seems like a lot to do for nothing. Yeah, it's, I was going to say, it's a, it's a lot of work. Um, but I guess if you have something that's worth it, maybe like a barbecue gun or something that you'd like to show off, maybe. But, yeah. How about no, How about a high polish and blue? Shiny blue. You got, got any of those? Are you particular to any of those, or you really don't care? 
for me, that's definitely not my style. And that's the kind of thing you can't do that too many times. Otherwise, you wipe the blue right off and you're starting from zero. So that would yeah. be really good at polishing and keeping that blue, I think. Yeah, I think polished blue looks really nice on, well, especially on revolvers. But uh, yeah, on a nice browning high power or something, it looks pretty good. Um, kind of since we're winging this, I was looking in the comments and Roosted out there was asking, uh, he was looking at the standalone national reciprocity bill and uh, all he could come up with was S-466. Can anybody confirm this? And I was going to say, was there any other updates? But well, Pondery was watching the Senate stuff off and on throughout the day, and I was watching the lobby off and on throughout the day. And it, I, from what I gather, they ended and did not address uh, concealed carry reciprocity today. Yeah. Well, like what we, is it? This the we're forty six and not four sixty six. So S four forty six. Oh, 446. Okay. Yeah, well, did they have did they have till the end of this week or was it till the end of next week? Was today their last day? Oh, uh, yeah. At least for the Christmas or whatever, yeah. Yeah, for okay. At least that's what I understand. Yeah, so nothing will happen until after New Year's, really. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Looks like it read twice and referred to the Committee on the Judiciary. So, introduced to the Senate. I'm just reading the, uh, what is this? The uh, Senate, like, uh, page, congress.gov, the Senate page for this bill. And actions introduced to the Senate. So it looks like it has to pass the Senate, pass the House already to the president, became law. So we're waiting for that. Does it tell you when it's going to happen on here? No. It does give us a summary of it, though. The bill amends the federal criminal code to allow a qualified individual to carry concealed handgun into position into or possess a concealed handgun in another state that allows its residents to carry concealed firearms. Okay, so there's a qualifier right there. A qualified individual must, one, be eligible, possess, transport, or receive a firearm under federal law, and then two, carry a valid photo identification document, and then three, carry a valid state-issued concealed carry permit, or be eligible to carry concealed carry firearm in his home state or residence. So I guess that covers uh, constitutional carry if you've got a valid photo identification from a state where constitutional carry is valid your photo ID would count hmm. that's interesting and it says in another state that allows its residents to carry concealed firearms so that could be the interesting one there I think because uh, I don't know I guess every state technically does so we'll see Psycho was saying that one should have been the bill that we're looking for should have been introduced in December. Was that is that the one? And this one says it was introduced uh, two twenty seven seventeen. Oh, okay. So this might be a different one. That one sounds good though. So I don't know. Yep. So maybe we haven't found it. Unfortunately, it looks like Medax got a uh, response from a Democrat senator, and he supports doubling down. So it sounds like he got a similar message that Rick did. Hey, I want you to vote no, or I want you to vote yes on concealed carry reciprocity. Hey, thanks for your interest. We're going to go ahead and vote no on that, and here's why. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, at least, at, at least they're getting a response. I I can give them that, I guess, but. Yeah. Well, if you don't make it your position known, then they don't know that they're not representing. You know, they can't be held accountable if they don't if they haven't been informed. So once you inform them and they make a decision to not represent you, then you can do the appropriate measures after that, right?
All right, well, so I guess that's rust removal. You're welcome. We'll move on to uh, the gun and get into some stuff here. So uh, before we do, we usually take a break between the first and second segment of the show each day to feature one of the members over at Gun Channels. Uh, gun Channels is a place we built a while back, community focused on firearms, and it's com completely driven by its membership. So it's paid for by the membership. People that do decide to do either the $12 a year or the there's a couple of memberships levels now. There's a $2 a month, uh, which comes out to like $25 a year, I guess. And then uh, a couple other levels and all of the uh, costs, the, I don't know, cost a couple hundred bucks to keep the thing running on the servers. And then, uh, you know, some of the other stuff that comes up once in a while, uh, all the co costs is covered by the members. Appreciate that. We don't do a bunch of subscription drives or anything like that. So try to keep it on the low key as far as uh, bugging you about maintaining it and that's working pretty good uh, but again it's completely driven by the members as far as the uh, moderation and the I don't know what you call it the culture of the place is all just a factor of the people that are there so it's a pretty cool uh, place and we like to feature the members each day today it's DB Cooper dirtbag Cooper as some people consider it, call it douchebag Cooper so I think what Bob calls him Dirty Bird Cooper, that's what Jimmy used to say. Yeah, I, I usually just call him a douche. You know? But, eh, he's an all right guy. Got some weird ideas, but, you know, I mean, having to come up through the streets as a, you know, a cardboard box dancer, yeah, yep. that'd be tough. Back in the day, DB would be handing out newspapers, and then whenever you get to the bottom of the newspaper box, he would open up that cardboard box, and then do little dances on the street with his break dancing, his hat out. Eventually became one of the masters of rap of New York, streets of New York. But then, you know, with all the gang stuff going on, he had to go low profile, so had to uh, reimagine yeah. himself, eh? And, yeah, now he just hangs out with us because he's, you know, scared to be seen anywhere. Yeah, he's got an X on his back. Gun channels are for everybody, even people that are uh, FBI witnesses or whatever. <laughs> All are welcome. All right. Well, so uh, again, thanks for all the people that make gun channels what it is. We'll move on to the gun biz. And it says, what did you buy? So I think we were doing that after uh, the Black Friday or whatever. So, yeah, something happened with the schedule here. And um, what do we want to do for gun biz? today um why don't we talk about um making money and trying to do stuff with money on the internet because uh it says that our george is saying that db cooper owes him money oh I hear that a lot unfortunately yeah. so as gun people uh we don't have well we have to be on the on the quiet or whatever we can't talk about guns when we use paypal um, some banks are doing that. I forget what they call it, where they uh, they see that it's a gun business, they'll stop doing business with the company. I forgot there was a term, but uh, Obama started that as a way to uh, basically make it intolerable to be a, a gun business, make it difficult to do business. Oh, yeah, I heard, I remember that a bunch of banks in California like stopped funding a bunch of manufacturers and stuff. Yeah, yeah basically, basically the the take money. Uh, huh? Virtue signaling. It's what they do to show all the, the, you know, the turnip heads, the, the snowflakes. It goes to, you know, they want to show all the snowflakes that they care and that uh, that's why they should bank with them. But, you know, they don't really care. They wouldn't do it if they were getting lots and lots of money from the gun places. Choke point. That's what it was called. Thanks, Moon. Gun News Network, of course, is going to know what the news is. Yeah. I don't know. There's definitely a lot of money in the gun stuff. Uh, you would think like the gun broker would come up with one or Guns America or one of the large auctions would have come up with one. You would think there's potential for somebody like a Brownells who deals with a lot of money in internet sales or Optics Planet even, even though they don't do. Well, they do gun stuff now, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's why that's why the banks don't bother those people. And right? even, um, what is it, Newegg had a bunch of shooting stuff. You know, Newegg, the big online computer place yeah. yeah 
Amazon. They sell a bunch of gun stuff. So it's frustrating that they'll have all the stuff up there. Even eBay, you know, there's ways to get uh, gun related things up there, even with their draconian, like, fascist laws against gun stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anyway, all these places allow gun stuff up there different ways, and they'll all take the payments. But yeah, it's got to be a uh, sporting goods part or a uh, accessory to a sporting good item or something. Yeah, well, I had a, I got a kind of, a, I guess it's an example of that, but um, that offer up, I put up sh uh, full size pistol hol uh, shoulder holster. I had a couple of them that I was selling, and almost immediately got taken down. And then I just put full size shoulder holster on there, like reposted it, and it's it stayed up there. So I guess it's all about the wording in some places too. What did you title it first? Full size pistol shoulder holster. And then oh, I just got back and just went full size shoulder holster. So I don't know the pistol part. I guess that they took it down almost immediately. That's probably all it took to set off the little computer rats. Yeah, the little bots that they got floating around out there. I don't doubt it. And that's what they look for is keywords. So yeah. So. Hendrix is saying that, but uh, the week before Black Friday, an SKS, a Steyr M9, and a 22LR conversion for my Glock. So I'm curious which 22 conversion. There's a couple of different companies that make them. You guys ever shot one of them things? Yeah, I yeah. think it was a TCM one or something. I had or I shot, and I don't I don't know. It was just weird. Yeah, I've got both brands of them, and I like them. I think they're great. They turn a Glock into a 22. Done. You get the mags. They're pretty easy to deal with. Uh, it's a little more finicky because it's a 22. You can get rim lock on any kind of rimmed cartridge when it's going through a pistol, of course. So you just pay a little bit of attention. You know, it's a single stack mag. Um, so you got to pay a little attention as you're loading them, but not too finicky. And excellent low cost uh, alternative for drawing and manipulations and uh, certain things where you just, you know, you want to be able to shoot, you don't want to have to, re you know, reset the trigger or something, and, uh, or just saving money. And since they're exactly the same dimensions, they work in holsters and everything. So I think, again, there's reasons I like the Glock, like all other guns, and that's one. There's some really decent 22 long rifle conversions. Yeah, Advantage Arms is the one I like the best one. So this keep that. Do you have one of those 22 long range conversions for your high power, Bob? No. Why would I do that? It's only a 9 millimeter. They're pretty much the same thing. That is narrower caliber. Narrower tube. So less lead waste. Some of us care about the environment. Yeah, I don't. I actually think that it's got lots of room to soak up all the crash and that stuff. <laughs> Uh, Roots is saying he's got the M922. It's similar. But it's got, that's the one with the hammer on it. It's a little weird. But uh, yeah. yeah, concept. Very close to the same dimensions as a lot. For a few years, that was your best bet, really. All right, well, so that was Gun Biz, maybe? Keep going. They owe us time because we were yeah. we went long yesterday. So it's like they stole a bunch of time from us yesterday. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, I still play Clover Tack, but yeah. What? I just blame Clover Tack, but that's okay. Oh, because he was pushing into your time? Yeah. yeah. Well, on Fridays, what we like to do, or at least what we're going to start doing here, is reading some of the viewer uh, comments. So we're going to jump over, open up the uh, screen capture here, and we'll look at some of the comments that are coming in on the YouTube. Uh, Travis saying another great show. That was for the uh, yesterday show, I think. Gifts under thirty or under twenty bucks. CCW on a fixed budget and uh, best distance to train at. So thanks for that. Uh, Wes is saying I'm from Indy, hanging out in the garage, listening. Right on. Thanks for that. Uh, what part of Indy? Or I guess that's Indianapolis. I was thinking Indiana. 
And then uh, Psycho Sam listening to the show for ideas under 20. I think the mats you lay under a gun when you clean it, when you work on it, are neat. Are those even under 20 bucks, though? Here's the thing. We were talking about free stuff to get at gun shops. That's one of those things you can get from gun shops for free sometimes. Yeah, I've seen the Glock ones, too, for like 15 bucks, something like that. Okay, so they're going to be close to 20 but not over. And yeah. then um, Pondry was saying, no, wait, is it Pondry? Somebody was saying, might have been, uh, what was it? Somebody was saying earlier that they got a uh, stool from that gun shop. You know, those, um, not like a bar stool kind of thing. Except yeah. Oh, yeah. They're more like what you have, like a pool hall or something. Or like yeah, you can get them for your truck now to you know, snap on on them or stuff like that, like mechanic type ones too. I think it was Gavin was saying at his shop he hung out there and they gave him one and he was saying he felt bad because it's such a nice stool and the ones I've seen from like Smith and Wesson and stuff are super nice, like they're super strong, they're definitely well made, last forever. But they do get them for nothing if they make a big enough order, if they've been working with a company for long enough time, whatever reasons they'll get them. I mean, they can buy them, but a lot of times they get those things for nothing. So I'm sure if they're passing it along to a customer, it's the kind of thing that they have probably too many of. They have a couple of them or something. And uh, I don't, I wouldn't feel bad. And if they're offering it to you, grab it. And that's what I was going to say with those mats. You can, a lot of times they'll get extras of those and they'll just have them sitting in a pile somewhere. So, you know, ask them and they might say, oh, yeah, sure. Here, take a couple. What I like them is the really cheap ones, the ones that have like, uh, ads on them for something stupid like a cheap laser or something they'll give you little almost like mouse pads you just flip them upside down and put them in tool drawers and they keep your tools from making a bunch of noise every time you open the drawer uh the next the one for clp has lots of funny comments written all over it too i don't know that one is that the oil the lube clp uh, yeah i mean they must make their own mat i guess parts mat Otherwise, the ones that have an exploded view of the gun or pictures of various rounds. Uh, right? I haven't seen the one with various rounds on it. Uh, like with the targets, I wouldn't buy one for myself, but I would love one as a gift. Uh, secondly, as a stocking stuffer, I like the little generic bottles with the metal tips like syringes. Use them for oil and ballastol under a buck each. Um... So I guess he's talking just like little squeeze bottles or something that you might get at like a parts store or like a, a tool store or something. Finally, how about like a, real thin ones? Yeah, yeah, almost for like um, well, for machine oils and stuff. Yeah. Finally, how about a clock where the numbers are pictures of various guns? I don't. Oh, you mean like as you go around the clock, like the the numbers are just a bunch of guns. That'd be cool. I never seen that before, but that'd be cool. Yeah, I'm sure I, you might see them in a gun show or something. That's the kind of thing that anybody could take apart a clock and take some time and put one together. You could do that with different cartridges too, different rounds. That nine, would be neat. Nine o'clock, ten millimeter, for example. Four, three, two. There's even ones. What would you put for? There's every number. It seems like every number there's a caliber for. Like Seven. one, you put a seventeen. Yeah, exactly. 222, yeah. 332, 4. Six. There's no 6. So otherwise you'd be pretty good except for 6 and 11 and uh, 12. But otherwise you'd be fine. 6.5 Grendel. Oh, there you go. <laughs> and 7 millimeter Mauser. No, 7.60 by 39. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's better. Yeah. European caliber. And nobody would want it from 7 o'clock ever. They'd be like, dang, it's a European time. <laughs> All right, and then he says, I have one with guitars for my music room and one with guns would be great around the reloading area. Oh, okay, clock. One with guitars. Can you imagine how giant that clock would be if there's a guitar in there for every single time? That's like 12 guitars. I would assume that he's going to have all the necks go to the center, but still, that's a massive clock. He must have a huge house. Just <laughs> <laughs> use a guitar and just drill a hole put a clock mechanism inside it. That'd work pretty cool. I guess you could put it up on the ceiling, like a giant ceiling fan. But still, a huge the clock. thing to have in your room under the staircase that you have built. Oh, there you go. And then you'd never see it. You have to be like, hold on, what time is it? Oh, <laughs> 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 All 
You ever have one of those houses where the stairs to the attic come down out of like a hallway or a closet and they unfold kind of like this, the landing gear on a spacecraft or something? Oh, yeah. You got to pull it down with a rope. Yeah. It's like makes about a bunch of noise. You can, you, there's no way to sneak up into the attic with one of those things. It's like, and then you just get on it. It's like, yeah. And it like fold bends and yeah, it's horrible. Oh, those are archaic technology. Ever, but. Well, I mean, it's way better than the alternative. It's sticking a ladder up through a little hole in the closet somewhere. I knew people that had that, and they just left the ladder, though. And then it would seem like actually a better idea. Ours was like in the hall. I like, well, I knew people that had it like in a closet. And sometimes anyone could have had a closet in his own room. So basically, the attic was his like second floor of his room. And that was awesome. So, you know, of course, I wanted my attic because nobody was using it. And uh, the, there were the ladder things in the hallway. So basically couldn't ever get into the attic because as soon as you go in the attic, somebody has to go down the hallway. And they either fold the ladder up and throw you in there or lock you up there or yell at you and you have to come down. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, but so, those are all the best places to hide from zombies. Attics? Yeah. Yes. The trick is to throw lots of water up there so it gets hot in an attic. All right, so um, Monty was asking the other day about a Blackhawk holster. Or he says he has a Blackhawk holster for his 25 caliber Army Galassi. Does anybody know that gun? Army Galassi, no. Well, I guess Italian gun. So that's a unique one. I don't think you're going to find too many holsters that are made specifically for it. So he's asking, where do I get a custom one? Um, I suggested somebody makes one, so he's asking if he would know any suggestions. Uh, the one guy I know who makes my custom holsters for me is here in Arizona and Tucson. It's called Zona Holsters, like Arizona. But I looked the last time I looked, his site was down. So it's possible that he's not making holsters anymore. But honestly, I think any person who's you know been in their own Kydex is going to be able to make that for you. What they might need to do is have the gun. Uh, I'm just going to just assume that they're not going to just have one as a blue gun. They probably don't exist. And yeah. odds of them having that specific one are probably low. So I would say, would you think Craigslist? Have you guys ever seen Kydex people on Craigslist? So I don't know, maybe Craigslist or something that would, uh, you know, type in Kydex um, and, uh, and then the name of your town maybe or something. Try to find somebody local, I guess is what I'm getting at, so that you can either bring it over to them or... Uh, let them use it overnight or something like the holster makers i know you know can handle it they'll, they'll take a gun overnight use it and then give it back to you right away this is kind of neat though see on the clear plastic uh grip panels so you can see how many rounds are in it i like that or you just get a bunch of three-piece suits and carry it how the uh, italians intended it to on the inside vest pocket that's italian carry yeah <laughs> I like this one with the clear grips panels. Too bad this will never be gone of the day. No, too weird. So, oh yeah, that is kind of neat. Yeah, huh. it's like uh, the like ants. Tiny. Ants just did that. So every Friday, we try to take a look at comments. Thanks for the people that are leaving comments. Not only does it give us something to talk about on Fridays, but as we mentioned, that's how these social platforms work. As you interact with them, as you utilize the comments, the thumbs up or whatever the indication is for like, as you subscribe to channels and that kind of thing, you're uh, giving that channel a bunch of ticks on some kind of a scoreboard. And when it's time to show a new viewer, somebody who comes along and starts searching for things, the recommended videos over there, they go to that scoreboard and see who should be recommended. So we do appreciate the people that are commenting on the videos. It does help for that. And like I say, it gives us something to talk about on Fridays. Well, I guess uh, huh? Those clear grips look like they were just, you may just cut a couple of pieces of plexiglass, though. <laughs> it, could, it could be. Yeah. I mean, really, if you just got a counter... Whenever you've got a skeletonized uh, frame, right, and then you've got uh, some sort of uh, indicators on your mag, on the sides at least, well, sometimes they're in the back, but on the sides of a, of a uh, single-stack mag mostly, or a channel, 
anything really that gives you some kind of visual indication of what, how many rounds are in there. Why not go with a clear, loose sight or whatever grip panel? Oh yeah, because you can you can like sand it to shape and then just polish it back to clear. Yeah, exactly. Get it to whatever shape you want, even with some sort of a texture, like just the uh, checkering or something to give it some kind of texture. You can still polish it back to clear. Clear enough to see through to see how many rounds are in it, at least. That's a neat idea. Put a little piece of little LED strips on both sides to light up what's in there so you can see real easy. <laughs> and then if you really want to go nuts, you put a little picture of a little pinup girl or something underneath there. On the one side. Oh, who slowly undresses as you use up rounds? Like one of those pens? Yeah. The whole new thing. See, if they didn't have such, we should have done that on the other day when we did sex and guns. But yeah, like those pens that when you start writing on them, they, uh, she undresses or whatever. Good idea. Yeah, I think it's a business plan. Yeah, and. Right, so that you're inclusive, and we don't want to as assume any kind of gender or sexuality or anything. The nine millimeter ones can have a dude on there. <laughs> we want to make sure that the ladies have a uh, something to look forward to, also. I guess everyone's fully represented. Dano yeah. can try out the first pair of grips. Let's see the grips. The pink is in the grips. I get for a couple of guns. I have. The grips I get for a couple of guns that have the picks. You can scrape off the pick and it would be clear. Oh, I see what you're saying. He's got a couple with the Lucite panels that have pictures underneath. And then if you scraped off the pictures, you know, it would just be clear. Hmm. But you can get them clear too for most guns, I imagine. I mean, if they're definitely, if they're making them with a picture on the back, they're probably selling them clear also. I can imagine that. Well, what do we want to hit next? Oh, I don't know. To the gun shop. Today we're not doing an actual gun shop, although we do have a section for it every day, a uh, segment of the show for uh, Gun Shop of the Day. And uh, it's one of the reasons we started doing this show, I guess, 465 episodes ago, um, to talk about new gun shops all the time. So we drive around and look at gun shops. We've been going to gun shops for a long time. Bob comes down to Arizona, and we've looked at gun shops in Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, and uh, Nevada, and uh, we accumulate all that stuff at a, shop, a website called gunshopguide.com. I've had this website now probably since 2006 or something, I'm guessing. And uh, even back then, as I started building websites for, I don't know, concealed carry or for uh, hunting or whatever it was that we were building websites for, I've always been interested in, in gun shops. And as soon as I accumulated enough reviews, I guess you'd call it. I'd walk into a gun shop and take pictures. Uh, I decided let's make a dedicated website for it. So um, it's had a couple of versions along the way, but right now it's becoming the place where we accumulate all the reviews that we do for this show and for the gun show loophole tour. And then slowly we're adding uh, archives of gun shops that I visited, you know, pre-2017 or 16, whenever we started the tour. Uh, back in 2012, the Haas USMC and I drove around the country. I forget what how many states that was, 16 states or something. And I don't know, $3,000, I remember that. And uh, reviewed quite a few gun shops on that trip. And uh, back in 2001, I drove around the country and only went to two gun shops, I think. But still, uh, try to put all of the different uh, tours and adventures into uh, the gun shop guide. So one of the other things we do over there besides gun shops is firearms museums, and that's what we're featuring today. So uh, there's a page over there called Firearms Museums. If you go to any of the pages on Gun Shop Guide, it's right there at the top. And when you click on it, you'll see a list of the firearms museums that we have already been to and have reviews of or videos of or whatever, and then a whole bunch of them that we have yet to visit. Uh, now, if you're looking through the page, and feel free to jump over there and check it out anytime you want. It's a web page, so it's always there. Um, if you see something that we haven't visited and is not on our list of stuff to yet be visited, then uh, please let us know. There's a spot in here where you can recommend a gun shop. Right here under gun shops, you can suggest a gun shop. And feel free to suggest a firearms museum as well. 
So even if it's like a VFW hall that has a little display, feel free to let us know and we'll add it to the list. Uh, our goal here on the gun sh daily gun show uh, by doing the uh, feature in a gun shop every day is to inspire people to take that camera out of your pocket, that phone, and take pictures of the gun shops you visit. Share that on your social media platforms. Uh, you know, the crowd, the concept that a whole bunch of people doing one thing, a whole bunch of people throwing a dollar in, a whole bunch of people taking a picture, a whole bunch of people using a hashtag, accumulated turns into a movement, turns into momentum, and can change public opinion, it can change policy, it can change people's minds. So the idea is that by putting gun shops out there, just once in a while, every once in a while, a regular person putting up a picture of a gun shop, that's the goal. So same thing with the museums. If we can uh, find and highlight and use this internet, which allows us to archive pretty much everything, right? It's keeping track of all kinds of stuff we wish it wasn't, but let's, let's make sure that it includes the things that we want. So if there's an art museum that has an interesting portion of the museum that has to do with firearms, let us know. Uh, a couple of these, like the 45th Infantry Museum, I might have been told about it, but I had no idea until I was in uh, Dallas and Martin said, you better check the 45th Infantry Museum on your way out of here. And I'm glad he did. Uh, the Cowboy Museum, a lot of people had recommended that one. And um, I'm again, very glad that I was able to check that one out. It's a really cool museum. So uh, uh, that's the firearms museums. They're over on Gun Shop Guide. So there's a link to them at the top of a uh, page there. If we're missing one, click on Suggest a Gun Shop. Otherwise, enjoy them. There's uh, directions and links to their websites and stuff, and then the pictures and the videos that we've taken there. And if you've got pictures or videos or whatever from any of these places, feel free to let us know. This is not just our website. It's a website that we built to hold all this info, but we'd be happy to include your information as well. So you can always contact us here at the show, dailygunshow at gmail.com or me specifically at gunwebsites at gmail.com. All right, so that's our gun shop of the day. It's kind of a bunch of gun shops, I guess, and their museums. Yep. Um, we want to take a look at the gun of the day now? Could you be bothered to do a gun of the day today? Or are yeah, you going to do the 25 caliber Army Kalesi? I did a gun of the day. The Walther. Uh, Walther? A Walther GSP pistol. So this is a particular target pistol. Um, it's a truck. There you go. These are really cool. They're kind of high-tech looking, but yeah, very neat pistols. Like semi-automatic, mag-fed, just your you know usual target pistol. But really, I just like Walther's and... These ones look really cool. Have you shot one of these? Yeah, my uh, brother's got one. Okay. Which one? This one? I don't know. It's an early one. Oh. Um, as far as I know, they make like the standard, which is still custom or like ergonomic, but then they make crazy ergonomic, like to your hand kind of ones, right? Yeah, yeah. You can just buy one, or you can buy one and then take it to a place, and the guy's going to fit it to your hand kind of thing, right? And then oh, nobody else wants to even shoot it because it's all goofy and it only works for you. Yeah, but they're made for, like, precision target shooting, right? 22 caliber. Bunch of tape. Them. They're neat, but uh, it's just too much for one trick pony for me. Oh, I imagine it's, very, it's very much, yeah. Really into it? If you had a kid that was really into it, I could see it. Oh, yeah, because that, that's something that takes it to the Olympics. What kind of hand? Do you see that green one up there? On the upper upper left of where you was just at? Yeah. Can't handle it. It's too much for you. <laughs> Look at that girl. Whose hand is going to fit? What kind of alien hand would fit in there? Well, see what it's doing is it's just filling up your, like, the meteor hand down here, really. So it's not really... It's, yeah, it's, it's almost... Bracing here. itself, it's almost bracing itself on your wrist. But yeah, I love, I love the trigger. It looks like something off a water pistol. Yeah, it, like total, the whole gun looks gross. It looks brand face age. <laughs> it looks gross. I could see using that in a sci-fi TV series. 
see someone using that in like a pool or something like that. Yeah, you probably could carry that around and people would just think it was a water gun. Yeah. Well, they're gonna think it's a BB gun. It looks doesn't look it looks so much not like a gun that I don't think anybody's gonna think it's a gun really. Yeah, that thing's got a foregrip on it. Ooh, what the hmm? Well, where? You mean this mag? No. You passed it. I don't know, Jimmy. Yeah, Wait, right. right there. Yeah. Oh. That's a little different. Right. That's, oh. that's betting on something for the picture, I think. I see. Yeah, I think so. I don't know, but they did take the trigger guard off of that one? That almost looks like it's something screwed on there. Oh, that's probably a weight. Yeah, I was going to say, maybe they took the trigger guard off and took a weight and stuck it on there. But that's not the same gun. There's no mag there. So, there's no mag there. It's, is that the that's like gun? an airsoft or something like that. Or maybe a single shot? I don't know. Yeah, this is some different gun. This is a Franken broker broke. <laughs> it's like where you screw in the CO2 at or something. Strellis. Yeah. yeah, seriously, that could be a CO2 gun. So that's a different gun. So yeah. That's different. yeah. That's the Italian version. Yeah. yeah, the British version, it's only air-powered, but it still has to be registered. <laughs> so here's an unprecedented thing. We're going to have, oh, and we have a new subscriber over there. Thanks to Tony. So uh, we're going to have you rate Bob's gun of the day. It's called the uh, Walter GSG pistol. And uh, we're curious as to what you think. 22 long rifle. Do you think they're going to change their vote because of that? Yeah. When did the Daily Gun Show become TNG? What's TNG? I don't know. We're not too up to date on things, are we? <laughs> Star Trek's Next Generation? I don't know what TNG is. Ta give it Tactical Next Generation? I don't know. Yeah, we're not keeping up. We're not tracking. Yeah, we're not hip with the kids nowadays. Of course, Bob would love the trigger. Best gun, 2017, hands down. POF USA Revolution. Over is asking also. Since when did DS, DGS become TNG? What is TNG? What is this? Night, the nightly gun show? Does he mean the nightly gun show? Yeah, huh. maybe. But then it would be TNGS. Tinges. The next generation. Uh, it's Cowboy saying very cool, very expensive. Nobody else is saying anything. Nobody likes your gun, Bob. 2700 20, bucks or something. They're not that bad. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like taking this for three months on that. Yeah. To get something crude and gross that you could carve in your garage. Oops, oops, please. I want to see. It's a precision firearm. Oh. Yeah, yeah. He's saying that we're stealing the next generation meeting his Wednesday show for competition and youth shooting, shooting sports. You don't, you don't own the twenty two long rifle, goofy looking gun, but you can have that one. Don't put that gun in kids' hands. It's going to make them hate guns and think that they're ugly and gross and and make them world champion elite. <laughs> so <laughs> shotguns is a little different because you got to get really expensive shotgun for a kid to make it lightweight and everything. But um, 22s, though, you can get pretty fancy looking, almost Olympic looking 22s, not super yeah. expensive. And then that thing and things like it, you can get, well, you don't have to spend $2,700 on it. Um, so what do you think? If you get some kid a, I call it a race gun, a gun designed to do one thing well, perfectly, really, and then doesn't really do anything else good. Is that uh, something that is a good thing for kids? Or like you say, is that going to make them go, is this what shooting is? Because I don't like this, and this is like this. I think if I would have had just 
Ruger Mark II's, which would have been the closest thing we had to just that kind of, you know, just a target gun, basically. It's like a, a Ruger Mark II bull barrel. I would have probably liked it for a little while, but been nowhere near as into guns as I am having a massive collection of just all kinds of guns to play with. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, some kids might be just like, no, all I'm ever going to shoot is this precision gun because I can put a bullet into a gnat side from a thousand yards. Um, or he might be like, well, this is cool, but it's only a 22. I want something to go. <laughs> yeah, I need a precision gun. I'm going to take that thing, throw it in the trash, and whip this thing out. <laughs> Snap. Now, Jimmy. I don't know if anyone's told you before, but machine guns aren't really precision weapons. Yeah, I know. I, I don't need precision. That one seemed to hit, hit right into the target. Didn't you hear it go, kew, 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 kew. that means it hit a couple of things. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, you guys are already well aware of what that sound entails. Time to crack them knuckles, whip out them keyboards, and get ready for the Daily Tactical Pop Quiz. Today, I went old school on you guys. Just them they're pixels. Gonna guess, they're never going to guess it. No, so this is a visual one again. And they have to look at their screen right now and see what is happening and be the first to identify this. They're never yeah. going to. Well, unless Jimmy zooms it right out again. Yeah. I'm not going to do that. Gonna do that. I've been practicing with the Zoom feature, so I'm <laughs> we're safe. Nobody's going to get that. That's so obscure. So we're broadcasting on the Instagram, so those people are also eligible, correct? Yeah, of course. Sen? Sen? No, I don't know what that means. 42? Incorrect. Pause 12, no. Winchester the Fraction Carbine, no. Pause <laughs> 12. Pause 12 coming in from the YouTube side. Winchester Lever Action, Jerry, say that. Pause 12. F and FAL, no. Clover, you're wrong there. This point been giveaway right here, so come on, guys. A P90? A P90? What? Sten gun? Come on. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Think, oh wow, that was that was. I I could not call. Who was first? Oh, I could call. It was definitely the YouTube side. Definitely the YouTube side. Really? Okay. Well, that would be Slim Cowboy then. Even though the YouTube side is not as good as the gun channel side. This time, they somehow managed to win it. Everyone has their day. Mm -hmm. Even a broken ammunition clock is right twice a day. <laughs> wow, that was a tough one, though. Do you think that a clock that is made out of full-size guitars where they're all got the necks going into the center, like, do you think that as the, the second and then the hour and the minute hand go around, like the minute... And the hour hand play chords, and then the second hand strums all the necks. So well, anyway, some cowboy. I'm trying to not get Bob to do this horrible part of the show because my neighbors come over and they say, "You wake up the baby." That, that makes you the tactical hot shot of the day. There's the kids. <laughs> Car alarms start going off. Congratulations, Slim Cowboy. We did have an answer from Matthew on the uh, side. Or on the inside as well. But, yeah, but it wasn't fast enough. Yeah, that's impressive because I couldn't have figured out from what that clue was. What? I could tell from, from the sling part of it. Yeah, as soon as you had their, uh, their logo on there, so I mean, that kind of gave it away. It could only be a top folding shotgun or like a goofy AK or that. There's nothing else that folds over with that kind of sling attachment. Yeah, I suppose. All anyway, right, we're at 576 subscribers on the gun, on the uh, Daily Gun Show YouTube uh, channel. So anybody that's watching that would feel like it, 
jump over to the channel, click on that subscribe button, and there's a little Liberty Bell there. When you click on that Liberty Bell, a uh, thing will come up and wake you up when you're sleeping to tell you that our show's on. And you need to know when our show's on. You might be wasting your time watching a baby get delivered or <laughs> surgery or something, and then this thing will come on and let you know that you need to get over to the Daily Gun Show. So uh, we're trying to get to that thousand mark. That means we need 500 more. So if everybody this weekend would create five YouTube accounts and subscribe, we would have another 200. That would get us halfway there. So you got your jobs to do this weekend. Thanks for that. For sure. I wonder if I'm subscribed. I better go check. Yeah, it would be nice if our own people that are the show subscribe to it. That would help. Yeah, just a little bit. I think it's like I could get 500 more hosts. <laughs> Anyone who wants to be a host, let us know. Of course, you have to subscribe to the channel first, and then we'll we'll take your your resume. You have to go to the casting couch with Bob. <laughs> oh no 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 no! Only the ladies. Oh no, we already said so. Take suck it up, Buttercup. Got to take it for the show. <laughs> Not gonna happen. <laughs> All right, now it's Friday night, and it is time for a gun movie. Every day we try to do a couple of things on the show. One of them is talk about a gun-related movie of the week, and uh, or I guess on every show. So uh, it might be something you haven't seen in a while, or if you're a youngin, especially on the internet, on the Instagrams, we know most of you people are youngins. You ain't seen nothing good yet. So uh, this movie is called The Big Hit. The Big Hit. Anybody seen it? Probably one of the most classic movies of all time. Mark this is the one where they're in a like a, a, a office building or something, and they're robbing it. Is it an apartment building? Something, something like that. I don't remember. It's been a long time. I remember it was Marky Mark, Lou Diamond Phillips. And then, like, they were teammates or something, robbing something, and then they started, like, they went against each other, and then they were enemies. But what's a classic movie? I do not remember this one at all. This was when Marky Mark was still Marky Mark, I think. Yeah, or just getting done with being Marky Mark, one or the other, but yeah. Don't call me Marky Mark. I'm not Marky Mark anymore. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a serious actor. Uh. But yeah, this one was pretty good. And uh, it was sort of like in the let's be funny, but make it like a gangster heist type of thing. So like a younger version of Oceans. Yeah, it was like a, they had like a drier sense of humor in there too. And it was like Sarkat. I don't know. I, I It was an entertaining movie. I remember that much. This was a girl in it. So you know, you're welcome. If you have not seen this one, you are going to thank us. It's a good chick in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> her name's China Chow? I don't know what her name is. Well, that's what I just said, China Chow. She's basically tied that's up. Cliche. She's basically tied up in this go-go uniform the whole time. Yeah. The entire movie. But that, yeah, I think, though, that was in the late, late 90s, right? So, I mean, we weren't PC at that time. They were, like, super PC. Yeah, now if you had a Chinese girl tied up um, named China Chow in a schoolgirl outfit in a movie, you would never air it. Ever, 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 ever. The snowflakes would lose their shit. <laughs> so anyway, that's our movie of the day. So let's see if anybody's seen it out there. Bob bought this off of eBay. <laughs> 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 Yeah. <laughs> what? That wouldn't even fit in my camper. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, nobody's saying. Oh wait, good movie, not great, but good. Travis is saying. I give it a thumbs up if it, if you run across it. Why? You know, you got the time and you know the stars align. Check it out. Since Travis Great Outdoors is the Travis that hangs out here more often, even than Travis Midnight Range. Should we reorder the number, the the ranking of our Travises on this show? Yeah, I'm the, pretty sure. Yeah. Uh, Midnight's getting like the. Well, he can be one point five, but I'm thinking that Travis Travis Great Outdoors should be like Travis point four, 
and then that way we, the other Travises can come in like at the 1.7 level. Wait, there's that many of them already? I only have, I think I only have three. I think there is only three, but I'm just saying, I don't want to, I want to give them a whole different numbers, number system so that they feel better about our show mm -hmm. than that stupid show. <laughs> I just, I, I just call them all you. Hey, you? Yeah, that works. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, I'll quit showing our secrets here with that. And then I think we're wrapping it up. All right, we got some history. So today is the 15th of December, which is, is the uh, Bill of Rights Day. I guess only one state, stupid South Carolina, celebrates the Second Amendment part of the Bill of Rights. But um, Pondery was saying earlier, I think, that um, they have uh, assignments in school even. Although I didn't like the way he was saying it. He was reading off the like um, challenge, I guess, whatever you want to call it, to the kids in South Carolina. They need to write a, a paper about the Second Amendment, but it says something like the the right to... I think it just says the right to keep arms or the right to bear arms or something. So it was leaving out the other part, like the right to keep. It was saying, like, say, write a paragraph or whatever about our right to bear arms. And I was like, well, that's interesting that they're, you know, they're focusing on the Second Amendment and they're making it a big deal. In fact, it's an assignment for the kids, but then they're not only going to give them a portion of the Second Amendment. But anyway, it's the Bill of Rights Day. So, uh, yay, freedom. Yeah, that's a good thing. Bob doesn't care. What's happening? History ain't in good. And it is like that the girl who doesn't get asked to dance. So he's like, oh, yeah, America got asked to dance again. Oh, whatever. Well, let's see. In 1773, a couple of years before we were the awesomest country ever, to protax the, protest the tax on tea from England, a group of young Americans disguised as Indians throw chests of tea from British ships into the Boston Harbor. That's right. Today is the Boston Tea Party, December 16th, 1773. Well, that'd be the reason that America had to enslave all those coffee harvest guys in Columbia, right? I don't know. I do know there's a second story to that, that a day later, uh, they went out and scooped a lot of that, that filthy harbor water that had tea in it. They just scooped it into jugs and sold it to Canadians. And they were like, hmm, this is good. <laughs> Actually, the harbor water probably wasn't as bad then as it is now. <laughs> no, seriously, there wasn't any pollution in it. Except for well, poop. Well, poop. Yeah, lots of poop. Yeah. And, yeah. Whatever they threw off the ships, because they didn't worry about it in those days. Let's see. 1978, Cleveland, 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 Ohio, becomes the first U.S. city to default since the Depression. What does that mean? That's some kind of financial thing. Why is that in here? Yeah, they went broke. They basically went broke. Arthur C. Clarke, 2001 in Space Odyssey, and others, uh, born today in 1917. Wow. One year, one year older than my grandpa. Both of my grandpas, I think. Wow. I don't know anybody else on this list. So a bunch of nothing happened except for the Boston Tea Party and the uh, declaration, or I mean the uh, Bill of Rights. So, hmm. Freedom, freedom times two. That's twice as much freedom, and, and whatever for the same price for nothing, free. All right, I think that's uh, everything we do today. Tomorrow is Saturday. Travis, one of the other Travises, doesn't even show up to this show. Um, does a show called Caliber Corner. I'm good at that. Some crazy early time. No one even can keep track because it's so early. And then we do a show called Tool Time at 11 our time. So we live in Arizona, and you get to do the math. You can use some kind of a tool to determine what time that is for you. And uh, that'll go live on the Gear Websites channel. Then uh, later on in the day, Rick does Rick's, Amer uh, Rick's Life, as I say. Why do I want to say Rick's American Life? Because it feels like it's NPR when I watch it. But uh, Rick will do Rick's Life as I See It at 3 p.m. Eastern on Saturdays. It's Maggie and Moon do their own show on Saturday evenings. Uh, I don't think anything is going on on Sunday mornings anymore. Then uh, uh, Yoder, Texas will usually post, uh, come and talk it to a syndicated radio show out of Texas. 
the radio show that Matt was on, Never Enough Ammo, when he was doing the, we call that thing, the Second Amendment rallies. We were getting together. Uh, he went on that show to promote it. I'm muting Jimmy because he's making a weird background noise. So um, in the evenings, Bob and I will do the van chat. And Midnight does some sort of chat on YouTube, which I won't acknowledge until he starts posting on gun channels. Then what Pottery and Jimmy will be doing early watch on Monday morning. Oh, uh, yeah. Yep. That'll run till the midday lobby shows, which keep continuous 24-hour chat happening over on the gun channels until the uh, midday stuff or the uh, primetime stuff starts to happen on Monday, which will be HVS, which will be Matt doing his nerd chat, and then us at midnight. Oh, wait, did I say HVS? Yeah. So yeah, that's all the stuff this weekend. Stay tuned. And... Uh, Thanks again for watching. We have a lot of people joining, uh, more than we had at our earlier time slot. So it seems like people are taking this later time slot. Um, if you're out there and you haven't chimed in, feel free to chime in on the comments or email us anytime at dailygunshow at gmail.com with any kind of suggestions for topics, uh, suggestions for just directions on the show, or you know, for complaints about Bob. Yeah, nobody's going to complain about me. <laughs> anyway, on that uh, note, we'll uh, finish up with our quote of the day. Uh, today's quote is going to be by George Washington. Now, before that, though, I want to remind everybody, please like, share, subscribe. Uh, We've got a fair number of thumbs up there today, so thanks, everybody, for that. Um, if you can afford it, it's in your hearts. You can support us on Patreon. The link will be in the show description. We can always use the help there. And, uh, yeah, on that, George Washington. Guard against the imposters of pretended patriotism. You know, we've seen a lot of those in, in uh, Washington and Hollywood, haven't we? Thanks, everybody, for watching and listening. And we'll see you all tomorrow. The guys and gals of gunwebsites.com encourage you to take a CCW class every year, practice at least once a month, and carry every day. Thanks for watching gunwebsites.com. Thank <laughs> you.